This, this is, is a Missy, Missy Elliott exclusive. Hey, I'm Mary J. Blige, and I have my girl Missy Elliott here with me today. And today we are going to share our world. She's going to share her world with you and all of the things that she's lived and been through. And we're going to share our times together as friends. Missy, what's in your head? <laughs> you, know, you know, I be trying to do it a little different every now and again. But you do it different than anyone. Like, nobody <laughs> does it like you. Listen to who talking about. But I'm talking Listen. about you today. <laughs> Listen to who talking about. But I don't know Come how Boy, to... you are the blueprint. <laughs> the <laughs> blueprint. The turquoise print. <laughs> the every color print there is. But yes. Me, but Missy, I don't know how to like cut my head off in a video. Ooh. Or make hawk fit, spit fly. <laughs> so, yo, I don't know how to this you this is what makes you Missy Elliott, and there will never be another, and there is not anyone male, female that thinks like you, and you're the most simple, regular, down to earth person. But then when you see your videos, you'll be like, yo, where's this? What's up? <laughs> Missy? <laughs> you know it's so funny because I used to watch Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson videos. Of course, right. And I always said that I wanted to make something that will make people run to the TV to to do what they did because yeah. that's what it was. Like, if anything could get me in the crib, it was a Michael Jackson video right. premiering. Right. And so I was right. like, I want to be able... Of course, I never made any on that level, but I said I wanted people to look at my videos like that. But you did make it on that level, Missy. No, Michael and for, Jackson. <laughs> no, 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 but let me tell you, Michael Jackson did it on a scale that was like for the like the world, the masses. You did it for our culture. You did the it for, hood. For, for, you did it for hip hop. And you know, hip hop, you know, it's just normal, regular, you know, kinda. So right. when you came through with the heads flying and the bag and the <laughs> colors, you know, you and Dave Myers and you and Hi, you know hype. and hi hat and hype and yes. you took it to the next level. And so to know you like I know you mm -hmm. and how normal and regular you were. Do <laughs> you they know, do they know how far back we go? No, they don't. <laughs> you didn't even have a video out yet when None. I was hanging with you. None. And so when I finally saw your videos, I was like, who the hell? It's not the same girl I was hanging around with. But you just you just such a beautiful heart, beautiful spirit person. You've been my friend through like you when know, people got thick know, and thin you, for real let's be clear you were the one that came to me and said you're going to be a star mind mm. you you was already like everybody had a mary j blige what's the 411 album in their car if you did not own that you were slipping i remember being on 125th street and just hearing every car go past playing one of them records from that album. Wow. So you at that level, when you said that to me, I didn't understand at the time because I'm thinking like, well, this is Mary J. Blige. Like, what do she see? Because I'm just a chubby girl with the finger waves. <laughs> no, no, I, but I heard you spit. You know, I heard I heard you sing. You know, I already heard. You know, mm. just through you know Joe to see. You know, right. just through the whole camp right. that we was in. I heard. I when I heard, I was like, oh, she's out of here. She's wow. special. Like I said, I didn't know what your visual was going to be. <laughs> but, but I said, yo, this girl is out of here. And in my mind, I was like, she ain't gonna need nobody. Like, because wow. you had a whole crew of people, yeah. but I just knew you was going to end up dolo doing and it, for, said it, doing it big. And we riding around in that red Benz. <laughs> you know? Yes. I okay. used to yo, drop you off. You know, you had little dates going on and I said, girl, I'm going to drop you off on this good, good date. And I'm riding around in your car. And I said, look how thirsty I was riding around in your car playing <laughs> Your music, and I know people was like, I know that's Mary Whip. <laughs> super thirsty. I got the you and Pooba wrecking up loud, just super thirsty. And I mean, those days. But you was my uh, homegirl, Miss. Yeah, I wouldn't never let anybody use my, especially that red car. Right. That the, red drop top. I was not what? letting anybody. I was like, it's something about this girl that I really, really trust. And I really, and I, I put some of my most deepest, darkest. Things into you, you know what I'm saying? And, right. and in that car, we shared a lot of, you know, talk, a lot of real talk. Ooh, whoever so, got that car now, I know they like, whoa, <laughs> if that talk is still left in that car. Ooh, that car's probably 
told him somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, so I would never, you know, I love you because I would never let nobody ride around in my car and I'm not there. You know, brand what I mean? new, spanking, spanking, brand yeah. new, and I'm just up in probably every alleyway wherever I could just drive <laughs> just so you can be seen you know like money making Mitch I gotta be on stage right. son <laughs> everywhere with that car and mm-hmm. I mean I cherish those yeah. moments me because too. you know you didn't have to allow me in your space you were married and you were still regular too inside <laughs> it was like Marry the superstar, but we'll go to the mall and you know, you just be walking through there like and then the people running like Mary. And, and, and like, we gotta run out. Right. <laughs> like, you so... see why you bring me in there? <laughs> <laughs> we running out of the mall and the garden state. I remember us running out of that garden state mall. Garden State Plaza. Yes. Yes. I just heard some thunder. You know I'm in L.A. I'm like, get ready to get up because I don't know if y'all got a tremble or whatever. Uh, Wake up. Like, I should, but I didn't know y'all was going to throw the rain on like that. It seemed like everything y'all did, you know, because I was hearing everything y'all did. I was like, yo, these guys are so talented. I have never even heard anything like this. I think when we were going through it, we thought it was uh, a lot. And I know that God had his hands in that because Mm -hmm. it actually allowed us to create a sound because we didn't get a chance to watch videos and listen to other people's music. Mm -hmm. So at the time, we didn't, you know, we young. We want to know what's hot out there. We feel like we missing out on who got the hot video, who got the hot record. But that worked in our favor because we didn't hear nor see. Mm -hmm. So we had to create because we didn't know what was hot. Mm. Musically, we weren't scared to take risks because our ears hadn't adjusted to hearing a certain sound. Mm. All we were hearing were what we were doing. Mm. So it sounded correct to us. So we wasn't in there like, you know, that don't sound like such and such record. Mm -hmm. It don't sound like all we knew was what we were doing. And so when we finally came out, People thought it was something new that we had created, but we had been doing that way back in the basement days. And we was kind of bred like that because we couldn't hear, we couldn't listen to other people's music, which Mm -hmm. worked out for the best of it because we had to create our own thing. And that's a beautiful thing. And it definitely worked in y'all favor because to this day, there is no music, not a song that comes on the radio. They can't duplicate it. Like you, you know, Tim, you guys, man, I mean, we all take our hats off to y'all and we just commend y'all and just keep doing that. Keep creating. You know, it get hard. (laughs) No, 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 I know. It it, it get hard, but I'd rather be able to sleep at night. And if I be true to myself, then I can sleep at night. Right, right. So that's how I live. Like, listen, you know, everything, it, it may not work. But at least if I believed in it and I was true to me, then I'm good. Right. And when me and Tim first started, you know, it's important for people to keep people around them that think like you. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you can have outside energy, Mm -hmm. and especially as as artists, Mm -hmm. you know this, Mm -hmm. come in and be like, I don't know about that record. Ah, that ain't hot. And, you know, you might have thought it was hot at first, and then you start saying... now you like, second, oh, damn, is it hot? Right, right. Like, that don't sound too hot now. I don't (laughs) like that record. But when we came in, it it was me, Timbaland, Genuine, Mm -hmm. Aaliyah, we all of us came from that same place so we all thought alike and we didn't have any outsiders around Mm because i always said just imagine if michael jackson and quincy jones had some people in the studio with them that couldn't understand why they were singing thriller like, right, because because you can't just <laughs> sing a record like Thriller and everybody in the room get it. Right, because soon as the first line come on, it's close to midnight. <laughs> Some evil lurking in the dark, they out to get you. Like, right. you, they may be like, "What is a scary song?" Right, but they because they geniusly were in a room together with people who thought like them. They heard the genius in that, right. and they put it out and. 
look what it did. When you're creating, you do need to keep a tight circle of people that believe in the vision. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because if they don't believe in the vision, they're going to throw everybody off. Like right. you said with the whole, that was a great analogy, the whole thriller thing. Yeah. Right. The wrong person was in it. Like, what the, you know, <laughs> I don't know, man, about that. That's all we needed that one. I don't know, man. And then everything is. <laughs> <laughs> and they might not have never did it. They might would have said, no, okay, no, nah, you know. No thrill album. It. Right. And then Michael Jackson would <laughs> never have gone down in history like he did. Yeah. Yo, let's talk about the basement. The basement. Yo, those, <laughs> them dudes, those <laughs> records were crazy. What the, I, you know, I used to be like, yo, what are they, what are they thinking about? Like, what's going on with them? Can I hang out with them a little deeper than what, because it seemed like y'all had me on the hangout skirts. <laughs> but those records sounds like, I want to hang out too. Well, you know, the thing is, is you was married. You were already successful. So we was trying to make sure that we impressed you. You was there. But I was trying to bully my way in there. I was trying to get in there. <laughs> and y'all was like, we don't want her to see this. I'm like, I want to see it. Yeah. I'm going to cook. <laughs> no, <laughs> and, and you know, I mean, we did a lot of partying. <laughs> I know, and I wanted we to did, party too. Oh, yeah. oh, girl, we did a lot of partying. Them songs come from a lot of parties. We on another level. <laughs> Who you down with? I'm um, down with several. Come on yes. down. How you remember that? That song was crazy. That's how oh, I remember it. Snap. What? No, that's deep. What? That was you one of my favorite. That yo, that was my, yo, that record. It, it yo, went so crazy. deep into me. That, and I was like, well, he would freak out to know you remember that record. Are you kidding me? I want it. Wow. They wouldn't let me get down. You let me get down, but they wouldn't let me in. They was closing that door, and I was trying to... <laughs> let me in here, or else. Girl, we were so scared of you back then. See, people don't know. This the very zen Mary. That Mary back there, baby, you probably would have kicked uh, that door that down. that drunk rampage. What? I was like, let me in here. Hey, I say, we dodged that social media because <laughs> baby if Ooh. social media was around back then I don't know if we'd have been, been on the blogs <laughs> it would have been no other artists on the blogs but us they'd have thought we was paying the blogs let <laughs> see the stories I don't even know if we want to go there on real talk but goodness <laughs> but, but sorry sometimes I listen back and be like even for myself what were we on like we were just <laughs> and and I think it was too just the hunger, the passion. There was no expectation. We didn't have anything out to compare it to something before. We you know, it was just music. You know how like you you doing your second album and your first album do so great, so now it's it's just stress cause you trying to make sure you make an incredible album like that first album. We didn't have that, so we were just making music in whatever we felt. The blunts we was rolling back. <laughs> <laughs> what was in it? Cause y'all was on another level. <laughs> Who you down with? I'm down with <laughs> Right. We was getting it in so hard that we thought we was down with several, and it wasn't <laughs> even a bunch of us. <laughs> And that was like a yeah. cool, like five of y'all static. God rest his soul. Oh, oh my static. goodness. Yes, static. I mean, you talking about incredible talent. Devontae, he knew talent. When I say he had a gift of knowing because every person up there, I mean, I never been around so many people. And it made us have to be up on our game because, mm -hmm. you know, he would sit everybody down a long table a conference room and you had to play your records and because everybody was so great you had to make sure because you ain't want to push him to push play and your joint was whack <laughs> oh because he would let you have it and if mm. he loved something he would play it like 80 times so just imagine it not being your record that you gotta hear 80 times oh, and you man. sitting there looking oh. at the other artists like oh. <laughs> eight okay that's enough already but mm. what was great about it is that it made us be up on our game because he had mm -hmm. every person that he had there was incredibly talented i mean jodeci in itself Jeez, like they were the still to this day, 
the most talented um, group totally. of our time. Totally. Like, I like, you know, we've heard groups and stuff before, but I it's always was something about their harmonies that made me be like the church. But, yeah, besides be, that, they, they though, I was be, like, what yeah. else is going on here? Because it was just so special. JoJo, he carried that high note, and Casey and just had that raspy. Why did um, their harmony sound like it was 20 people? Well, first of all, I knew the secret behind that. <laughs> like because 20 people. Devontae had them stacking them vocals. So, okay. Girl, yeah, they, you know how you, mm-hmm. you may do three of one note? Oh, no, nah, it was like eight of one note. But the thing, too, is. Because Devontae played keyboard, he was able to make them do notes that people don't regularly hear. Okay. So that's what it that's was. That's what it was. But the way they blended it, I've never heard that note. And how does that note work with all of this? Because we only hear alto, soprano, and tenor. Right. But when right. you're playing on the keyboards, he knew those in-between notes just because he was a keyboard player. So he was giving them notes that a regular person... Oh, unless you probably jazz or something like that, mm-hmm. then you could probably hear like that note that would almost be wrong, but it's right. And wow, he, genius! All right, so do you mind? You feel like you want to talk about it a little bit? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, because I know y'all was super duper close. Yes. And y'all was basically family, and mm-hmm. um, I really want to talk about you know how you and Tim came up with all of the conceptually the things y'all came up with her for like one in a million like let's before we get into this let's go to one in a million because that song is crazy and you uh, wrote that right yes okay so I'm gonna be mad at you too in a minute what <laughs> Yeah. It's so funny because when me and Tim first met Aaliyah, we were nervous. And when we met her, she greeted us as though she was back in the basement days. Mm. You know how some records, it's records I've done for people that I didn't know if it was going to be big or anything. Mm -hmm. This record right here, I remember sitting in the studio and being like, it made me feel like I felt the way mm. before she had even heard it. I went in and demoed the vocals, and I just was like, yo, this record, it catch chills listening mm. to it. And it was funny because as big as we thought the record was going to be before it really did get big, they wouldn't play it because they said, I think it was because they had never heard a ballad done like this before. Right. The cadence, the back, cat, 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 cat. They never heard a cadence like that in R&B music. Right. And the rhythm, da 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 uh 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 is almost like rapping, jump rap. And so they, they hadn't heard that before. And they, I remember them saying they couldn't blend the record into you know how when you're playing it on the radio and you blend it to the next record they couldn't blend this record and so they wouldn't play it at first but they couldn't hold it and flex i remember going to a club one night and this i knew it was big he was one of the people that broke it for his you know hip-hop djs because Mm -hmm. we you know at the clubs people don't be playing no slow that slow songs used to be back when we was in high school like but this was Later, and at the end of the night, he played the song 12 times back to back. Wow. Funk Master Flex. Wow. Shout out to Flex for that. Yes. And to see people not walking out or whatever and just sitting there kind of like, and people didn't know how to rock to it then. It was more like this. Because <laughs> oh, they, they ain't know yet that you right. can still bounce right. to it like this. They ain't know you do this to it yet. Right. Y'all was ahead with all that stuff. See what yeah. I'm saying now? They Everybody's doing that. this. Y'all been doing this. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't know how to bounce to it because it was just like they catching the, the, the downbeat. But that might be too deep. <laughs> nah, <laughs> Go, nah, no, but I'm just saying, no. our rhythm is different. Right. Every song, if you listen to all the songs that we did, they were all right. This. Y'all had a yes. It was bounce. Everything was bounce. Even the rain. You, if you saw the, everybody yeah. in the video, every record. That's how we was hearing the music. Mm. Then once they um, played it, it was like 
Ants on Candy. Mm-hmm. And we were only supposed to do one record for Aaliyah. And that one record ended up eight records for her on that album. I think If Your Girl Only Knew might have been the first record I was crazy too. that we did for her. And I was scared because she was still young. And it was like the wording felt fresh. <laughs> it felt but a little for a fresh. young girl, it was cool. It was like, if your girl... I mean, what is a young girl going to sing about? Like, if your girl only knew, child. I don't know. You know, it was just scary. Like, I don't know. This might be a little fresh for her. And because, I don't know, it just felt... She felt like... Because, you know, Missy can mm. give you a good, just <laughs> nasty <Fresh> record. <laughs> I can give you a good, fresh, nasty record. <laughs> and so I was trying to contain it. And I was scared for her mother to um, hear it and surprisingly they released that one first so but, but it rocked though yeah, it, was it funny. rocked in the routine the way I was doing this <laughs> that was all in y'all wouldn't let me all the way in <laughs> yes I'm telling you and this was hard this was hard to move to um because it was so different you know when we had started working when me and Tim started working with Aaliyah she already had a sound Mm -hmm. already from her previous album so you know this because you have changed sounds and styles doing your different albums Mm -hmm. and so you might have came across a time where people might have been a little hesitant at first and then they like oh that's my favorite (laughs) joint yeah like like, just fine right and yeah people was like what what, what?" oh that's my joint when it first when it first I remember when it first came on the radio right crickets now it's like but that's the trailblazer you gotta in you. sing it that's the trailblazer in you and that's that's what i think um it's so important for people like yourself to constantly say that to artists to mm-hmm. not be scared to not be afraid yeah. you had to be that type of artist you knew that this record was something completely different from the records that you had done before. You knew when, okay, you know, soon as I start, I want to sing about some happy stuff. I'm Look, mm-hmm. I done gave y'all all the I'm not going to cry. I know y'all girls at home love these records where I'm finna let this guy have it because, that's you know, that's they like, girl, I'm talking about she is singing this joint for me. But then when you say, well, look, I want to go a different way you had to not be scared in yourself. I don't know. Right. Maybe you were, but well, only thing that kept sorry me from... that I'm we, we switching sides no, here. It's like so good. I'm, I'm it's not. Nah, we just <laughs> this is about us today. You know, you <laughs> and, just, you we... probably like listen, girl. Like, <laughs> whose show is it? But I just need to know that because I mean, it's good Missy. To... You can ask me <laughs> questions too. Like this is you know real talk. But it was, well, we, yeah. We well, talk. I want I want to know well, were you scared? I was nervous, but the thing that made me made the nerves go away is the fact that I needed a break. Mm. I needed a breather. It's like, yo, hold on a second. Am I all right? You know, right. is God great? Am, am I living in his grace? Right. Did I make progress? Or did, You know, I have to let myself be happy. Right. You know, because there's so much sadness. And every second of the day, there's some BS going <laughs> on. And you can Good. you can write a, <laughs> a book. Just think about it. Yes. But you got to give yourself a break. And that's honest. Yes. And that's what made people catch on. You know, mm-hmm. if they caught on. They only catch on when it's honest. Yes. You know? Yes. We were on. Aaliyah. Yeah. I remember telling Tim before we had started working on her album, I said, let's give her the sound from the basement because nobody Mm -hmm. really has heard it. So we actually, Aaliyah's album was basically based on the sound that we had created during the basement era. Right, that right. that one in a million album. So is that the album that um you can't tell nobody? I'm talking about no. <laughs> oh, hey! Well, no, that that was <laughs> no, that was the next album. <laughs> but she just kept rocking, and man. that's the static did that record. Mm-hmm. He did rock the boat, which is one of my favorite records too. I wonder what kind of records. I know she would if she was here. She would still be so far ahead because she didn't mind taking risks. Yeah, she was definitely one of you guys because yeah. she her stuff used to be like out the box. Like, yeah, she, she, didn't, she didn't mind. She actually is the you know, the one who 
wanted us to continue to keep working on her music. And mm-hmm. it was funny because, you know, at that young of age, the label normally, they went to her with a record that we had did back in the basement, but she liked what she heard for as our sound, which she took a chance because nobody knew who we were. <laughs> like as yeah. far as writer and producer, nobody knew. And you know how this industry is. It's like, oh, go get the hottest producer, uh-huh. the hottest writer, this yep. person, they done did this for this person. People didn't know who we were. And she, like, I like them. Mm. Uh, whoever these two are, I like them. You can hear the chemistry and like you said, it was like she came from the basement camp from... Oh, totally. I actually thought she came from that. You know, I thought y'all was close like that with her from the beginning. No, we didn't know her before then, but I mean, when we met her, mm. it was like she had been in the basement era. Wow. I knew we were we were close when we decided to all dress alike for the awards. Like, <laughs> me, her, and Tim had on a whole pony outfit. <laughs> Can we talk about Tim, though? Let's get into Tim right now. Let's Tim. just talk about the great Timbaland. Yes. I mean, you guys together, the team is amazing. Only one Tim. So you right here, but we don't have Tim. <laughs> so if Tim was here, I'd be like, yo, you're the most, one of the most amazing producers yes, ever. Yes, And the the things that he, the selection of sounds for, like, instruments that he chooses, I don't know, <laughs> you know. Well, Tim, it's only one Tim mind. And, but the funny thing is, is the world got a chance to see Timbaland. Like, I know Tim Zachary mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Zachary. <laughs> oh, you should have put his name out there, Missy. <laughs> and I actually met Tim through uh, Magoo. And I would go over to his house after school. And he was always so... Actually, he was a DJ first. His name mm-hmm. used to be DJ Timmy Tim. Mm-hmm. I don't think he knew how dope he was. He just was doing music, and I would go in there and sing over stuff, and his daddy come in there, fuss us out, because he was a truck driver. He had to get up for work. We in there laughing like me and you sit at this (laughs) table, got the music all loud, and I just was like, yo, like when we ended up getting with Devontae, my group, the sister ended up going to Devontae. I said to Devontae, please, I need to bring this guy up here. And, you know, Devontae looking at me like, Mm -mm. excuse me, (laughs) are you listening to the radio right now? Like, I own the radio. Every record, he didn't say this, but this is how he was looking. Like, when you turn on the radio, every record, every other record that's coming on is either a Jodeci record or something I done did. I'm, like, fighting for him. And I knew Devontae, I was like, he, he, he gonna kick me out of this group. Because he probably like, I don't know who this little chubby chick is coming up here demanding people from VA that I fly people from <laughs> VA up here. But he finally brought him up there. But before that, he used to have this, when I used to go to his house, he used to have this little Casio keyboard, the start em up keyboard that you get from Toys R Us. And <laughs> his hands is so huge and long and the keyboard was so little to see what he could do with that keyboard was amazing like I just would sit there and be like knowing this is a stardom up keyboard that you get when you know you your parents just want to give you something for Christmas to keep you quiet or something Mm. like it was a little keyboard but he mastered this little keyboard as if it was coming from a keyboard that people use to create major classic records. Then when Devontae brought him up there, Devontae realized that he had something. And Devontae mm-hmm. and Timbaland, he was a student of Devontae because Devontae was a genius too. Yeah. He would watch, uh, Timbaland would watch Devontae create because Devontae used to create sounds. If you listen to those Jodeci records, it's sounds in those records that are unheard of. Right. And so Tim would watch that. And Tim already was special in itself. So then he was able to see a genius at work, and he just ran. And I just wow. watched him. Devontae went and bought him his uh, first keyboard, uh, ASR-10. 
And he <clears throat> used that keyboard through all of our albums. He took a keyboard that he used during my album, That's Aaliyah right. album, Genuine album, Tim and Magoo album, <laughs> like, he, back to my album like, again. If it ain't broke, <laughs> that's his motto. If no, it ain't broke. the funny thing <laughs> is the keyboard keys start sticking because he had went through so many albums, he had to keep lifting the keys up because they Aww. were sticking through all our albums. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. When it came to my albums, I probably gave Tim a headache it, because, you know, I would sit in there doing my albums. And, oh. you know, if mm-hmm. he hit something, I'm like, I like that. No, I don't like that sound. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's crazy. So that's how me and him work as far as on my oh, So album. you were, like, producing the bulk of yours, and if he came up with something, you'd well, be no, like, Well, cool. no, he would be producing it, but mm-hmm. I would be sitting in there, and he would hit stuff, like, say, doing... um. Under Construction album, he kept telling me, this album, Solid, is done. And I kept saying, this album is not finished. I'm mm-hmm. missing a record, Tim. I'm missing a record. He said he always had to take a vacation after working on my album because I'd be on his <laughs> neck like, I don't like that. <laughs> so so um, by this time, he's just sitting there, and now he's just pushing buttons because he over it. Because I'm saying, this album not finished. And he pushed something, and it said, dun, 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 dun. Oh, <laughs> right, right. I right. said, what was that? Right. He like, what you talking about? I'm like, what you just hit? I ain't hit nothing. Because he's so <laughs> over me by the day. He over me. I ain't hit nothing. I'm like, yes, you did. So I'm going over there expect it to come up on the keyboard because now I'm looking at the keyboard trying to figure out which one he hit. And so then he's he talking about, you talking about this one? <laughs> Everything, this is with the attitude, this one. I'm like, that joint crazy. And actually, that was the last song that I recorded because mm. that he said that the album was finished. And that, I mean, that record came last, but ended up dropping it first. Because wow. we was going to go with Minuteman before that song had mm-hmm. even came about. It wasn't even a thought. And Minuteman was going to be the record. And mm-hmm. then when that came as a mistake, I ended up dropping that first. Wow. And what a big, a great, what a big, <laughs> big mistake. mistake. <laughs> Get your feet on those dad show ch- Okay, so you work with a lot of people that we love. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, that we love. So we love Jasmine. We yes. we love, love Jasmine, Jasmine Sullivan. I mean, yes. Jasmine is special. Mm-hmm. I met Jasmine at 13. I was coming out of Quad Studios. You know, we used to mm-hmm. hang out. That was our little hangout. Oh, Quad. Quad. <laughs> that was our little hangout spot. Mm-hmm. So her manager said, you know, I got this little girl I want you to hear. And, you know, we hear this stuff all the time. It's right, like, all the time. You know, and then especially when you think a little girl, you start being like, it's always cute, but mm. do they really sing? Or is it just, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Come back to me in another five, six years. <laughs> but she opened her mouth. I'm looking at this little girl, but I'm hearing... A forty-year-old lady. <laughs> like, yeah, I was got getting, the goosebumps. No, I'm crazy. serious. I'm hearing a grown woman's voice, so I'm taking her back because I'm looking like stop playing because they got some little tape recorder and this girl <laughs> is a, just a good lip syncer because ain't no wow. way in the world this is coming out of this girl mouth. So then I wow. said, come to the studio, and people don't understand like Bump Missy as the artist, as the writer and producer has been the hardest for me. Mm. Not hard to create records, but because, you know, guys, you always hear about when a guy has written, if a guy had written and produced as many records as I have, they would have been nominated for so many producers of the year. Yeah. But people don't know how many records yeah, I got to hold my breast for a second. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't know how many records that go back. I'm talking about, we can go back to Lil Raven Simone, like, right. like way back then. But 
still having to prove myself because I went in the studio with Jasmine. This was like, I kept working with her after I met her. And I said, you know, I would have her to demo records for me. And I did Free Yourself, Fantasia record, and I had Jasmine mm, to wow. demo it. Nice. And so when Fantasia sung for Yourself, I took it back to the label, and I said to Clive, I said, listen, I got this little young girl. I played it for Whitney. Whitney, I remember Whitney Houston mm. saying, show me her birth certificate. <laughs> I don't believe. Wow. I was like, she said, ain't no way in the world. This girl is... 15 years old sounding like this. She's one of my favorite singers of our times. Oh, and yeah, I totally. Just... The craziest thing of it all is that what you hear now, she was that girl at that age. Tweet is at my top. I love Tweet. She's so sweet. Uh, when I saw y'all at um Whitney's funeral, I couldn't even... Um, I miss Whitney so much. I, uh, girl, I, miss, her I miss her too, man. So I didn't want to do it, but I knew it was going to end up going there. I just remember... Um, being, you know, we stayed in the same building. So, you know, she would come up to my house and I remember her hitting me one day and saying, I'm in your car. And so we friends, but at sometimes I, I'm still thinking, this is Whitney Houston. Right. She's like, I'm in your car downstairs and I'm painting my toes <laughs> in your car. <laughs> so I'm laughing, thinking... <laughs> she just, you know, flogging. She she ain't in the car downstairs. So I didn't even run downstairs immediately. So about two hours later, I come downstairs and she and my Lamborghini, the door's up, and her foot, she got on one of my shell toe Adidas, and she is polishing her toes in my car. And I'm sitting there like, yo, this is Whitney Houston. <laughs> But she was just that touchable. Yes, and yes. So as big as she was, she was like family. Like she treated, she didn't you make didn't, you feel like you was Like she was her. Whitney. Yeah, you, it, never You that. felt like she was your sister, your friend mm-hmm. or whatever. You, she just sat with you, talked yes. to you, kicked it with you. It wasn't, it never, it didn't feel like you were talking to this gigantic celebrity. Right. Missy Elliott, the producer. <laughs> We're going to get on some Mary J. Blige questions now since we done talked about all the folks you done produced. And brought. But you did do one record for me. Yes, and oh, that was my joint. Ne- and that's still never my joint. Been. Never been. Come Girl, on, y'all. You slept on that y'all record. Y'all better find that. Just lay it on the album. tell you this was so advanced pardon me oh excuse me. hey forgive me hey i can't help it come, come on, on. Let me see. hey come on I, 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 but let me tell on. you let me tell you how advanced this record was because this feels like so gone monica now i did mm, i did monica right. so gone right it's the same feeling that's what i'm saying but it was so many years before uh-huh. the so gone right I'm telling you. So and I threw that joint Mom, out there. Missy has done so much, <laughs> and I don't know why people don't know about your producing and why you haven't been nominated for a producer of the year. Because I'm so a female. Many I get that's it. So, that sucks. <laughs> Y'all need to notice my girl. Anyway, when we do this album, we're going to make sure Missy's on the map with this producing yes, thing. Yes, man. Yes, please. <laughs> we can stay here till tomorrow. We can keep doing this. And we just sit no. here till Christmas like, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Happy New Year. We can keep going. Oh, 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 okay. All right. You know, I'm turning into a fan right now. So, J. Cole. I love him. Yeah, me too. I love him dearly because I can tell that he's a student of music and hip hop. The culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's not one of those people that is, you know, this is what is hot and I'm going to do this. Like, he most definitely probably can jump on any of these kind of tracks that's out, but he goes off of what feels good to him. Mm -hmm. And I remember when he hit me, he said, "Um, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm listening to all you and Tim music. Wow. And that meant a lot to me. And just when I listen to him, I know that I can tell the difference between 
a regular MC, not just because of the bars, but just the mentality. I could tell, like, he's a studier Mm -hmm. and he knows his history. A lot of kids come up in this era um, may not study. You know, where there was a requirement for us to know what those ones before us did in their music. Mm -hmm. Then it it was like a generational gap where Mm kind of like the new generation... They started right here where they're at, where for us, we had to know about the PEs, the KRS-One, yeah, absolutely. the salt and pepper, the lights, NWA, whoever, like we knew about them. You know, yeah. you can stay out too long, they think you're new artists like me. <laughs> yeah, you know, speaking of that, man, when Katie hollered at you, it right. was like, yo, Missy, you know, I need you for... The Super Bowl. Right. <laughs> right. What was you thinking? <laughs> I thought that I, somebody had slipped me a Mickey. <laughs> and, ain't, and, you know, people don't even do Mickeys no more, baby. Well, <laughs> you killed, like you always do, but you were gone. <laughs> and now the kids are like, who's that new girl? It made me be like, dang, like, have I been gone now? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> And you know yes. maybe maybe because I because I was writing and producing in between that time I didn't feel like I was going but maybe because the artist wasn't there it made me be like it's a new generation of kids mm. who think I'm a new artist which I'm fine with that cuz right. yeah, it's true you think I'm a new artist there that mean I ain't looking too old <laughs> <laughs> But she been around for some time. But I was, you know, most definitely thankful because she could have mm-hmm. asked anybody. And especially this is your her moment. Right. And people get selfish and be like, shoot, I want all 20 some minutes of my <laughs> but she but she opened it up. For oh you, yeah, man. she she yeah. said, listen, I thought she was gonna ask me to rap on the record that we had did together, but she said you know, I want you to do three of your own records. It was so amazing the way she set you up. And she fell back, like, I'll be back. She said, I'll be back. You know, that is a blessing because people don't, on the Super Bowl, they don't say, they don't even have the confidence to say, I'll be back. And you you know know what what she said? She said to me, she said, this is your time. She said, do you have anything that you're going to put out after you perform? I'm like, no, because I ain't know I was doing the Super Bowl. <laughs> like, I, didn't know, I ain't got nothing in the stash because I, I just had no idea. But she was like, if you do, drop it. And I didn't because I, you know, I, I wasn't prepared Damn, because right. I, everything kind of snuck up on me and I didn't know it was going to go the way it did. But thank God I didn't have to because three of my records ended up back in the top 10 that were 10, 15 years old. Wow. Now, we want I want to get into our brother because he is a genius, phenomenal, a minister almost, too. <laughs> we must be talking about for real. Yes, we are. Because <laughs> when that boy starts talking to you, you can be on the ground. He's such an uplifting spirit. Mm-hmm. He knew what, all that I was going through, and... He said to me one day, he said, when I see you, I'm going to put a mirror in front of your face so you can remember who you are. Mm, That's so deep. And it was so deep. And I just was crying and crying and crying. And he was like, listen, I know that feeling. I've been there. And I have cried just like you. So it's probably a lot of artists that, you know, have these moments. (laughs) But he believed in me so much that he... uh, Flew me out here, put me up. Wow. Mind you, when we did the WTF record, he was going through his own situation. And he was going to court. Mm-hmm. I admired him because I was sitting there saying, now, if I had to deal with something like that, I would not be able to function. I wouldn't be in a mm-hmm. creative space right. to even work. But he came in and... His energy was, it never changed. Like, it never changed. Wow. And he stayed uplifted, and he stayed uplifting me. He was still keeping me uplifted in his situation. In his situation. But there's there's not many people in the world like that. Like, he's a rare, because so many people, oh, I'm going through it, and the right. world knows. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we just, a lot of us not built 
to right. be like, well, let me uplift you. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, right. That is rare in this world. And I always tell Pharrell, you are another special person. A cartoon freak, mm. by the way. And I'm watching this, and this song comes on in the middle of this cartoon, and I just start breaking down crying and thanking God. And, you know, just, mm. I don't, it, mm. it was just, I can't even explain the joy I felt with mm. the sadness at the same time because I'm going to make it out of this. Right. And I played that thing. I found it on the internet. Mm. I had to play it 50 times, and I just kept playing it and playing it. And that's when I was going through all of my stuff that was all over the news mm. and all the bad press and the blahs and blah, blah. I, right. I kept playing that record over and over again. And I just Did stopped. he know that? Wow. I, I told him, and I, I, I just stopped drinking, too. Oh, And wow. so it was like good. everything was trying to get me to go pick up a drink again. Mm. And I kept playing that doggone record, and I, I got through. Just know about you. You know, you have done so many big things. You have performed with the biggest stars. <laughs> because I, I won't say artists, because there's a difference between superstars and artists. And you have done all of that but you have maintained no matter how big you have gotten you have always kept it straight with that culture like you never mm. even if you had to sing an opera record you still go find a way because you can't even help it because that soul is just embedded in yeah. there I don't, and, I don't know how to do anything else, Missy. Like, I but that's honestly good. don't know. I mean, no, that's good to have that, to do. <laughs> that soul. Like, that's important because, mm -hmm. you know, I think, um, I don't know what happened or I won't say, every, you know, because sometimes people be thinking, like, everything is bad. No, everything is not bad. There's right. great music out there. Right. But I do miss the soul, the feeling. The feeling is what's not yeah, here and, right now. And, that's what's missing. Mm -hmm. And that's because we lived in a time where we weren't afraid to feel. Right. Now, I think people, it's becoming kind of obsolete. I don't want to say that, though. I don't mm -hmm. want to say obsolete because that means it will be gone forever. Right. But as long as people like you and I are here, people will always feel. Because right. I'm not afraid to feel. And I think people are afraid to feel any kind of pain, any kind of joy, any kind of anything. So how can you heal or get through anything if you don't feel or know what it is? Like, if you don't, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You can't identify with it. You can't fix it. It's all, I wanted to let you know, like, you've always kept that. And that's important. Never lose that or, well, I don't mm -hmm. think you can because it's just embedded. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's me. It's Unfortunately just, for so many people, it's me. And, it's just oh, embedded, well. and, and that's that's fine, because we need to have that. I miss that, and we need to get back to that place of feeling. Missy, thank you so much for being thank on the you. show. I love thank you, sis, I love forever. you, too. I need that record, <laughs> I need that Missy Mary Elliott. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I said Mary Elliott. <laughs> Missy. <laughs> That Missy Blige Mary Elliott record. <laughs> See, but that's how tight it's gonna be that we we'll switch the names around on them. Yes. Yes. Oh. I love you and I thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on. This was big for me, y'all. Uh -huh. Missy Elliott.